Tulsa, Oklahoma, 1921, the Greenwood District and Black Wall Street, as it was called, thrived with Black-owned businesses and booming commerce. But that summer, it also became the site of one of our nation's most devastating acts of racial violence, now known as the Tulsa Race Massacre. But for all the damage and devastation, for decades, it wasn't taught in schools. Do you know that there was a time when right here, there were hotels and businesses owned by black people and that there's black millionaires. That theater is not here anymore. That hotel is not here anymore. What happened? Danielle Neves is the Deputy Chief of Academics at Tulsa Public Schools and is part of an initiative working to bring the massacre out of the shadows and into the classroom. Why was this such an important mission for you at all grade levels? One, I'm a parent and the thought of my son growing up here and not knowing until he was an adult what had happened really isn't acceptable. Our students deserve not only to learn about their city, to learn about the history, but they're also going to be the people who are going to lead for reconciliation, lead for healing, and lead Tulsa into its next great spaces. This month, for the first time ever, Tulsa Public School students, grades 3 through 12, will learn not only about that fateful day, but also the resiliency of Greenwood and its residents. It's like history meets you right at the front, doesn't it? Absolutely. We have artifacts here that come directly from Black Wall Street and many that were remnants from the Tulsa Race Massacre. It's history that for elementary principal Kathleen Wiggum was too important not to teach. We are named Greenwood Leadership Academy, and so our specific history is grounded in the Greenwood neighborhood, Black Wall Street, and what it stands for. She says the key is making it age appropriate. As early as second grade, students learn about entrepreneurship and contributing to their community. I want them to be responsible of keeping up with their stuff and to keep, take care of things. Teaching about the race massacre, you automatically think emotion, it's sad, it's heavy, they call it hard history, and it is. But there's also an empowerment piece that you can't underestimate. It's so important for our students to understand the dark history that exists, but it's also important that through that darkness, there's hope. The Mabel Little Heritage House, and it was built as a model for what the houses that were destroyed look like. Middle school principal Dan Hahn grew up in Tulsa and says many of his peers thought the race massacre was just a myth. These plaques on the sidewalk tell a different story, marking all of the businesses that were lost the owners never compensated. No one ever talked about it. Why do you think that is? Tulsa is always in a constant state of trying to build an economy based on people coming here. And things like this are bad for business. People don't want to admit that a city destroyed 10% of itself. It was a time when a lot of stories like this got silenced across the country because we needed to show the world that we were a strong nation that was united, and this is anything but that. Since 2009, Dan has been teaching students about the massacre, even hosting education tours of the Greenwood neighborhood. There are going to be a lot of people who say, we came all the way to Tulsa, Oklahoma to talk about Black Wall Street. We're talking to a white guy. Yeah. Why this guy? What would you say? It is my, my job to point people to the story and to help raise a generation of kids that grow up saying, I didn't know about this, what else do I not know? And who benefits from me not knowing? And that's really the aim of education is to raise critical thinkers that think that way. I am just a, a person who has been pointed in the right direction by so many people and really trying to help kids grow up not being somebody that is in the dark like I was when I grew up. For people who question, why did this take 100 years? What do you say? We refer to it as sort of a conspiracy of silence, right? Sort of a tacit agreement that we're not gonna talk about it for a really long time. It takes the conversations about mass graves, it takes various books being published, and then the educators of younger students saying, maybe I should teach it as well, right? It takes a little bit of that at a time for us as a whole city say, you know what, no more. What is your message to educators, not just in Tulsa, but nationwide? If we want our students to be their very best selves in the future. One of the ways is to equip them with the critical thinking skills to be able to say, here's how I'm charting a path so that in the future, my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren 
have less hard history to learn. Mm. We should mention that since 2002, the massacre has been taught in some Tulsa high schools, but now those lessons will begin much earlier. This also comes as a bill was just passed in Oklahoma prohibiting the teaching of what's called critical race theory. And while some lawmakers say that will not have an effect on how the massacre is taught, many fear it could. You'll be hearing more about that. For more on the Tulsa massacre and its impact, there are several documentaries out now. You can watch the documentary Blood on Black Wall Street. This streams today on NBCNews.com and NBC News Now, and it will be available on demand starting Sunday on Peacock. There's also another documentary on the History Channel. I had the chance to host a panel. It is phenomenal. It airs um, on the History Channel. It's called Tulsa Burning, Sunday night at 8 o'clock. And if you've never heard about what happened, many people are learning about it for the first time. It is excellent. It starts with how the folks got to Black Wall Street in the first place and then what happened um, in the months and decades after. I'm I'm curious, because, Craig, you say you didn't really know about it until college. No. But did you, well, being from that area, learn about it? I was just about Stacey and I worked in Tulsa. I interviewed a survivor once who was a little boy and had his, and he was hiding under the bed and tried to grab a stuffed animal. And the men who stormed through his house stepped on his foot and he yelled, you know, ah! and pulled his, his bear back under the bed. And he said he remembered somebody stopping. And then they saw the feet, you know, they would keep going. Oh, but we would do those stories. But it was kind of hit and miss. Oh. But thank goodness now we're, we're talking Absolutely. about it. You know, yeah. when we talk about civil rights in this country, unfortunately, a lot of it's focused on the South. And a lot of folks don't realize that a lot of the hard history that the teacher talked about there, it wasn't just in the Deep South in this country. Yeah, it was. Every, and really, really quickly, because I know we're out of time, but think about generational wealth and how you build wealth. People have trusts and all sorts of stuff. Hotel, one hotel, for example, there was so successful when that was wiped away and he had to escape. That family didn't get any of that money. All that generational wealth. You see all these big chains now. What would have could have been for that family? It's a great story. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that to us. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.